I have in front of me here the brand new Lenovo ThinkPad X13 for 2023. Lenovo actually sent this over for me to review. They asked me if I wanted to review it and I said, Yes, sixth gen Intel model of this laptop that I had uh, maybe like four or five years ago. And I actually loved it. It was super portable. I used it for school. I could take it everywhere. So when they asked me if I wanted to review this, I immediately said yes, because these are actually awesome laptops. This is the X13 lineup. So it's one of their premium options. They have, you know, the T, which is good for, you know, kind of mixed use. The X, which typically denotes their premium portable stuff. And then they have, you know, the P as well, which is more for workstation. But the X is their super portable stuff. The selling feature of this laptop isn't that it's, you know, the most fancy laptop you can buy out there. It doesn't have a 5,000 nit screen with touch screen and all kinds of RTX graphics and that. What this is, is this is a ThinkPad, a true and true ThinkPad. So this is made for professionals, students, people who want to get work done. They want to sit down. They want to have a very super hyper portable laptop. This laptop weighs absolutely nothing. This is the same type of portability you're going to get out of something like a MacBook Air. Super, super portable, 13 inch. So it's the same as like, like a notebook, literally like a notebook. Uh, so it's super, super portable. Despite the fact that it's all metal, it weighs almost nothing. Has the legendary ThinkPad keyboard, which is exceptional to type on you're going to get the track point nib you're going to get the dedicated track point buttons here you know obviously you're going to get a touchpad as well because it's a modern laptop so it's nothing fancy to be honest and that's not supposed to be if you've bought thinkpads before in the past you know exactly what i'm talking about these are meant to do what they're meant to do it's meant to be a very very portable laptop you can take with you to business meetings you can take with you to class if you work out in the field you know if you're an electrician or something like that you want a very portable laptop you want a powerful laptop you want something that has very good battery life but it's still some degree of rugged. You don't want to be lugging around some $5,000 RTX gaming laptop or something like that when you're working as an electrician in someone's home or you're going to a business meeting to business meeting or moving from class to class. Those have a time and place, but in terms of portability and battery life, they're not going to be the way to go. Something like this is going to what you're going to want to buy. So super portable, you can see there. Um, you know, Same thing you're going to get every single year. They haven't changed much, to be honest. Um, again, I had this laptop a few years ago and it doesn't look very changed from that. It looks, I'd say the fit and finish is a little nicer in terms of like the actual design. It's a little bit nicer. Um, the speakers are a little better this year, but overall it's not changed much and it's not supposed to be. So this model here has a 1200 piece screen, good brightness on it actually, to be honest. It's decked out with 16 gigabytes of RAM. You're gonna to wanna to get the RAM that you wanna get for the device because the RAM is soldered, not gonna be able to up upgrade it. This one has one 512 gigabyte NVMe. It actually has a slot for a second one, which is awesome. So you actually can get pretty good storage on a device like this here. This is an Intel model here. So it's equipped with the 13th gen low power variant of the chip. So this one here has a 1365U. As long as you're being reasonable, you're gonna get a lot of power out of this. But the biggest thing is you're gonna get a lot of battery life. So this Intel 13th gen, the U variant is gonna balance power with battery life. If you wanna get the P variant or the H variant, that's where you get into you know, serious power, but your battery life is gonna suffer. So this one, you know, again, it's a super portable, light laptop. It's not meant to have bucket loads of power. However, I actually found that the 13th gen in this, the 1365 is quite capable, despite the fact that it's not gonna eat up a ton of battery life. So you get a nice uh, velvet, whatever this material is, cottony type thing, Ooh, super slim. Yeah, so the X13 is one of their more premium. It's not their ultra, ultra premium, but it's one of their more premium uh, builds there. So you can see here, very, very nice looking laptop. Uh, it's a matte black, not a shiny black. Um, almost, it's textured a bit. Um, but yeah, you get this little bump out here, similar to uh, some of their like Lenovo Slim, the higher end Slim, you know, those studio laptops. And then also the uh, Z13 has that bump out there. Bottom here, fan intake, nice and exposed. Pretty big feet actually, to be honest. That's a pretty big foot there to keep good airflow going in. Uh, intake here out there, so you're gonna get ventilation out the back there. No vent on the side, so that's nice. You're not gonna get it blowing into your legs. So very, very premium feeling. Um, not gonna be kind of that sleeker, um, you know, shiny kind of material. It's almost like a matte, but it actually doesn't pick up fingerprints, which is weird. Um, obviously it's a super portable. So, you know, you need something you can take to meetings, to class, you want very, very light, this is gonna be the way to go, 13 inch. If you're just taking notes, you know, doing that type of stuff, you're not doing huge video editing, 13 inch is in many ways, the, the, you know, the size to go with, because it's super portable. It's basically almost tablet size. So port selection here on the right side, we have a legacy USB-A port, very nice. Full size HDMI, also very nice that you get such a thin little laptop. That shows you basically how thin the laptop is, because the HDMI is basically as thick as the laptop itself. That's nice. Kensington lock slot, so you can lock it down if you're a business kind of peep. Two USB-C on the side there. You can see that one has power, so that's the power delivery. Um, video out as well. Another USB-A actually on this side too, so you actually get quite a bit of I.O. You get two USB-A, two USB-C, headphone, microphone jack. So for a 13-inch laptop, that's pretty impressive. So very premium look to it, obviously. Um, 
This is one of the higher end Lenovo ThinkPads, so you're gonna get kind of that premium design, but it's still a traditional ThinkPad. So when you look at this, I've used ThinkPads over the years, many, many years, and I've... There's a ThinkPad design language. This has the ThinkPad design language. Uh, speaker grills, but that's kind of just for show. The actual speakers are there. So you're gonna get your speakers uh, firing, not from down. They're gonna be firing up directly into your ears. So you're not gonna get probably a ton of bass or anything like that, but they're gonna fire directly into your there. Uh, your power button there, this one I can tell right off the bat is a fingerprint just based on the way it looks. You can probably spec these out with or without, but this one has fingerprint. So you can see here it comes with the Lenovo Vantage. This time it's a commercial Vantage, which I don't think I've ever used this before. You can do very critical updates from here. So you're gonna to wanna to use Vantage first and foremost. So when you first get your device, before you update Windows via Windows, you're gonna to wanna to update your physical device via Vantage because this will be able to update your BIOS, which is important. And it's gonna give you better drivers. Windows kind of takes a guess at what you have and a lot of times it'll supply inadequate drivers. But when it comes to actual drivers, you wanna get your drivers through the Lenovo Vantage software. Windows can update its own features through Windows Update. But Okay, so now we'll do an audio test here. Again, the speakers are firing up. There's no down firing speakers. I'm gonna start turning it up. Okay, so for music, it gets quite loud. It's very clear, very, very clear speakers. Um, no issues with it. It has almost no low end bass whatsoever, but again, they're up firing speakers only. There's no down firing whatsoever. So it does lack bass, but it's not that kind of system. It's a 13 inch like Windows Thin and Light um, Ultrabook, um, usually for business purposes, but it sounds totally fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Now we'll test the spoken part and I'm gonna to go to my brother's video here and we'll see how, because he talks a lot and we'll see how it sounds in terms of speaking. I think that's more what you're gonna be using this for, you know, teleconferencing, meeting, that kind of stuff. I guess they can't really have references to alcohol in a T-rated game. Study, 90% of video games start with easy tutorial level. Whoa, self-awareness? This is a video game. They weren't wrong. This game does start with an easy tutorial level. Every yeah, so it sounds great. Uh, very, very crisp. Again, doesn't have bass, so it's not a music machine, not a media machine, um, but in terms of the actual audio clarity, it's really nice, actually. So the screen here, it gets quite bright. Um, I have it turned up, uh, you know, you can get up bright and dark. It's pretty bright. I mean, it's not gonna be 1200 nits like some ultra premium devices, but ThinkPads come with a very wide range of screens, I guess I'd say. This is a nice screen. It actually looks pretty nice. You can change the scaling there. I usually like it a little bit lower. And it's a 1200p screen, so you know it's not ultra 1440p 4K, but against a 13 inch laptop, so 4K would just kill your battery, and it would be crisper, but it would kill your battery. 1440p or 1600p would be nice, I guess. It would give you more app space, but I think for 13 inch laptops, 1200p is actually fine. Uh, there's gonna be potentially some reflections on the screen here, um, but again, this is a real work environment here, and I don't see any bloom whatsoever. This is uh, black scene here and there's zero bloom anywhere around the screen there whatsoever and perfect black uniformity it's not an oled screen so it's not the blackest black but actually it's pretty dark so the contrast ratio on this off my eye which is how i do things it looks pretty good to be honest and there's no bloom so for an ips screen good black uniformity no bloom that's already a win right off the bat but let's check the colors now and you can really see the transition there between the blacks and the colors. It's actually nice, very, quite nice for an IPS screen. Yeah, very good colors, I can already tell. You know, vibrant. Let's, uh, there's a Samsung one, or uh, see how it looks. Again, this is not a professional ranking, but I work with colors a lot, um, and this looks good. I have a lot of very color accurate screens. This scene specifically, I can always tell if the greens are oversaturated or the reds are undersaturated, oversaturated, I can usually tell from this scene here. This looks good. I can tell right off the bat that it's a pretty good screen. Again, not professional tier photo editing, you know, 4K screen, but it looks quite nice. Um, a lot of times, like I said, these business laptops, they slap in crappy screens. That looks quite nice. They slap in crappy screens from different brands. I think HP is really bad for that. Like they just toss in 220 nit garbage. Um, and you can buy their expensive screens, but you really have to pay for it. This one here has a pretty nice screen. Let's have a look at the keyboard and trackpad. So obviously we're looking at a legendary Lenovo ThinkPad. Uh, let's start with the trackpad here. So very smooth actually. So this is, you know, textured. 
This is very smooth. I wonder if it's glass topped. I don't think so. It's almost like, like a very silky rubber or something like that. Very, very smooth, strangely So left click, right click, scroll, and you know, you can use this like a mouse and keyboard basically. You can basically use the track point here, uh, you know, move around your cursor, you know, move your cursor around on the screen like this here, and then type a little bit, move it around, type a little bit, move it around, scroll, right click, rather than having to remove your hand down here and actually, you know, use the gestures here to move like that, and then come back and type, back and type. Whereas this here, you know, you have the nib there, so you're basically typing and you can just, without removing your hand directly, and it's your typical, you know, Lenovo ThinkPad keyboard, you get the 1.5 millimeter travel, good travel, so let's do a little test here. Yeah, so I mean, these are the best keyboards you're gonna find on laptops. Um, you can get, like some of them are a little bit different, so you get you know, like a T14 and that. They're a tiny little bit larger keycap. Um, the travel's the same, so I mean, it's a ThinkPad keyboard. So if you like ThinkPad keyboards, you know why you like ThinkPad keyboards, and this is a ThinkPad keyboard. If you haven't used a ThinkPad keyboard and you type a lot, like you're a student or a professional and you type a lot of documents, you know, you're a writer, honestly, I recommend just trying it. Get yourself a ThinkPad or borrow someone's ThinkPad or go into a store that has ThinkPads and try typing on it. So again, I just used one of these guitar picks, pried that up a little bit here. Let's uh, zoom out a bit there. What I'm gonna do is actually, looks like there's a clip there, which might hook in. So rather than breaking Lenovo's laptop, I'm gonna go to the back. Yeah, the back is the way to go. So you can open it there, and then you wanna slide down to the back here. Okay, there's the back off. So you're gonna to wanna to do the back when you take it apart, because the back has these vertical style clips which just go straight in, so it's okay to pull it straight off. But the front has these like lock style clips, so those are gonna slide in. So you'll wanna take the things up from the back. But anyways, here's the uh, lid. There's where the uh, air is gonna come in. You have a um, little dust blocker there, a little bit of like a thermal type solution right here, which will sit on uh, over the CPU and that. So that'll pull out a little bit of heat so this one's shipped with a 41 watt hour battery. It looks like there's a, a spacer here. So in theory, you should be able to customize this with a bigger battery. Probably if that's a 41, uh, you should be able to probably get in about a 52 or 57 watt hour battery. Probably 57 is, would be my guess is what the other option is there. So you can spec that out. So we'll see what we can get out of this even smaller battery. The fact that it's 41 watts, uh, watt hours, see what we can get. Uh, there's your uh, speakers right there. So the first one, second one, like I said, they're up firing. So they're gonna go that way. So they're nice and clear, not a lot of bass, but still nice and clear. Uh, and then you have your NVMe, so full size 2280 NVMe with a nice copper heatsink on that. Wow, surprising they put copper, that's, that's a very high end heatsink right there. So that'll pull a ton of heat out of this thing. Um, and then you actually have a second slot over here. Wow, interesting, you have a second slot over there. Um, you know, a lot of manufacturers don't put two slots on a laptop, let alone a small laptop. Uh, Wi-Fi chip is not replaceable, so you get your Wi-Fi there, but it's good Wi-Fi. Uh, AX2, uh, it's Wi-Fi 6 Intel, so that's good Wi-Fi anyways. It'll be good for years and years and years. Uh, pretty interesting fan there. So even though this is a very thin laptop, and you have a tiny little fan there, you have a nice spread over there. So probably, I guess there's some VRMs or something under there. Probably, and it's going to pull heat out there. Uh, you have your RAM here, soldered, non-upgradable RAM. So this is 16 gigabytes, so spec it out with what you want. I don't I didn't even know if this comes with eight, but you're gonna want 16 or above. And uh, there's your uh, cooling there, so. Okay, here's a look at the built-in webcam. Uh, it looks to be pretty good. There's no um, trailers, not that bad. Um, it looks good enough, to be honest. I'm sitting back uh, maybe two feet, so it looks like it has a pretty good wide angle. It's not zoomed right on the face, so it's good. Again, this is a business style laptop, student laptop. So it's gonna be something that you wanna have at least a decent webcam, something that's serviceable. Um, so you're gonna be using it for, you know, meetings and that kind of stuff or, you know, class or whatever you're doing. Um, so it looks good. So honestly, it's a good webcam. It has that bump out on the, on the uh, it has that bump out on the bezel, which allows it to fit a better camera as a result. So entirely serviceable. It's actually totally decent, I would say. Overall, listen to how the microphone sounds, but overall it's good. You get 10 cores and 12, Two threads basically is how it works. You're going to have high efficiency and performance cores. I think you get on the U processors, you get slightly fewer performance cores, more efficiency, but it should be fine. 16 gigabytes of RAM, you can usually tweak these out a bit. Um, 
That's where that's cut off, but it's running at 4,800 megahertz. Totally fine, so DDR5 RAM running at DDR5 speeds, and uh, everything else looks good. You get your graphics. Fine for day-to-day -day stuff, but you know, not a powerhouse or anything like that. Okay, we're running a Cinebench test here, and Lenovo switched to max performance or whatever, but let's see what we get for noise here. It's pretty quiet. So you can see the CPU switches up. Very quiet, actually. Move this back towards me. Here's a look at the Cinebench score, and we're getting about 7,000 on multi-core, 1,000 on single-core. Uh, you know, not the most impressive results out there, but again, this is a low-power CPU. So for day-to-day -day use, you know, you're going to be balancing good battery life with actually pretty good performance overall, so that's pretty good. Included NVMe is quite fast, so it's a Kyoxia uh, 512 gigabyte. You can spec it out with more if need be. 5.2 gigabyte per second reads uh, and 3.5 on the writes, so perfectly very good for an operating system drive, and again, it has that second slot, so you may just want to keep this in there and put in a put in a second NVMe for more for storage and keep this one for their operating system. So I'm getting about 450 to 500 megabytes a second upload and download, which is quite good on the Wi-Fi, so a very good chip in there. And you can see battery life here is actually decent too. So this first clip here, I have YouTube going. I'm on best power efficiency. Brightness has turned way up. I don't like to test this with low brightness because people don't use their laptops that way. And you can see here I'm getting uh, f about four hours with 86%. So YouTube playback, you'll probably get about four and a half hours of, you know, mixed use, I'd call it, uh, you know, just messing around on the laptop, watching YouTube, nothing super intensive. But then when doing some document editing, uh, you can see it jumped up here quite a bit. So same 85% and we're up to uh, five hours and 30 minutes. So you're going to get probably around six-ish hours. So, you know, if you're taking this to class or something like that with you and, you know, you're just, you know, writing and taking notes and things like that, it should last you a full work day or a full learning day. Uh, you know, six-ish hours, and of course, I mean, it's USB-C charging, so it's not hard to find an outlet. And you know, despite the fact that it is all metal, like metal top, metal bottom, um, and like the inside as well, you know, this is metal, that's why you're not getting any flex on it. Very rigid, very, very rigid laptop, you can see there, like, you know, for breaking it, it's a very rigid laptop. So you can take this with you, and you're gonna, you can take this with you and, you know, toss it in your bag. If you have a business meeting, you know, you can open it up, set it down the desk. If you're in a professional environment, you know, if you're on the road, you're doing that type of stuff, you can move it around and you're not going to feel like you're going to break this laptop. Some laptops, you know, they're super premium and you're going to worry about, you know, breaking them and causing damage to them. Not this, I mean, unless you toss it on the ground or something, but, you know, you're not super worried about something like this, you know, just, um, you know, getting scratched up or anything like that because it's a ThinkPad. It's meant to be functional. However, it's very clean, very nice looking, very premium feeling, very premium looking. Um, so, you know, this is going to be a perfect device for, so, I mean, it's a ThinkPad. If you've used ThinkPads, you know what they are. This is one of the better ThinkPads you're going to get, the X-Series. So, it's, I mean, it has no negatives that you're going to get from, you know, certain brands. If you're going to get this type of business laptop, you can get them from Dell and other brands as well. I've always leaned towards ThinkPad because they just have amazing keyboards and just the quality is there.